Mr. Sergeant, and were assigned a robbery detail. A lone bandit robbed the jewelry store in broad daylight. He takes $5,000 in precious stones. He's reckless. He's well armed. Your job? Get him. documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law to an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It's Tuesday, December 2nd. It's still in Los Angeles. We're working a day watch at a robbery detail. My partner's Ben Romero, the boss of Captain Gideon. My name's Friday. It was 1.48 p.m. when I got to the basement of the city hall. The car came. Joe, over here. Yeah, right. Oh, hi, Joe. This is from Dudley, is that right? Yeah. Better take Beverly Boulevard out, huh? Right. Want to get the radio? Yeah, all right. No report yet? No, he got away on foot. He headed down 6th Street after the holdup. Lost his job in the crowd. Better watch it then. Oh, yeah. How'd the thief work it? Did it stay? Roger, sir. There was not much to tell. He walked in the store at the right time, pointed a gun, grabbed a tray full of diamond rings, and walked out. $5,000. Figured he must have had the jewelry store pretty well chased. And it's like he's had practice. Well, could be. The sure one thing is well armed. All units. All units. A third and Bixel. Third and Bixel. Get it up, huh? Yeah. Man with a gun. All units. A third and Bixel. It's not a gun. And a man with a gun. Code in. Same as you can tell. Right, that's Bixel. Just a hand. Yeah, I'll call him. 80K to Control 1. 80K to Control 1. ADK out for investigation, Sergeant Bixel, 10867. Roger, ADK, close six to Sergeant Bixel, 10867. That must be it up ahead, Joe. Yeah. Right in the middle of the intersection there, there's a car turned over, huh? Hmm? Yeah. That's all good? Yeah. Let's go. Man, it's stretched out on the street over there, but it's good. Yeah. I wonder if we can get through here, please. Excuse me, please. Let us through, please. Well, let's don't just stand around looking. Did somebody call the police yet? Excuse me. Are you involved in this? Sure, I was in it. Did yeah, anybody call the police? We're police officers. What happened? Oh, I'm too glad to see you. Awful lot of trouble. Yeah. How about this man here? What happened? Oh, I slugged him. I had to. What do you mean? Well, I don't know what happened. He went a little crazy, I guess. He pulled his gun on me. How is he, Jeff? Yeah? He's got a bump on the head. He seems to be all right otherwise. What's your name, sir? Ernie Brooks. Uh, that truck over there, that's what I was driving. I was coming down 3rd Street, and I stopped with the red light over there. That, uh, that corner over there? Yeah. And uh, when the light turned green, I started across the intersection. I this side was laying here, came barreling down big, so went right through the red light, hit the front of my truck. Flipped his car right over on the side, just like a suit. Yeah, go ahead. Well, the guy went a little crazy, I guess. Uh, right after the crack-up, I pulled the truck to the curb and got out. This fellow here was just climbing out of the top side of his car. He didn't seem hurt at all. Yeah, man. Well, when he saw me coming over to him, he pulled a gun and pointed it at me. Then he turned and started running. I couldn't figure it out. What'd you do? Well, as soon as he turned his back to run, I went for him and tackled him. Fought like a tiger. That's why I say I slugged him. I, I had to, Officer. There's something awful funny about the whole thing. Wait a little bit there. Well, look here. There's his box right here. It fell out of his coat when I slugged him. Let's take a look. Yeah? Yeah. Must be three, four dozen in there. Rings, all kinds. Yeah. Looks like diamonds in them, doesn't it? <laughs> the ambulance arrived, and we took the unconscious fuel robbery suspect to Georgia to the shooting hospital. After he was revived and treated for cuts and bruises, we took him back to the city hall to the interrogation room. We fitted the description of the jewelry store bandit almost exactly. He refused to talk. He wouldn't even give us his name. We had his fingerprints taken, and then we had them checked through R&I. &R. The man was identified as Vernon Albert McCauley, an ex-convict out of Folsom and a two-time loser. He served one five-year term for armed robbery and another three years for ADW. We checked out the wrecked car he'd been driving and found out that it had been stolen two blocks from the scene of the holdup. 
We had the manager of the jewelry store which had been robbed brought downtown. He identified Nicole as the bandit. The suspect still refused to talk. Ben and I took him to the main jail where he was booked on suspicion of 211 DC. 15 p.m. He checked back in at the office. Take some of them a long time to learn for a two-time loser. Looks a lot of finishing. I can't take it. He's been out of post in seven months and going right back in again. Yeah. Well, we can get the complaint from the DA tomorrow and set the arraignment for Thursday. Yeah. Let us check with the manager of the jewelry store first. I wonder if McCauley could have been in those gas station holdouts. Remember? Last month? Yeah. Well, we'll have him in the show up Thursday and see what happens. You want to take care of the arrest report? Yeah, I'll get out an ACB, too. Might turn up some outside jobs on him. I'm still hungry. You still got that candy bar from lunch? Yeah, I think so. I don't like it. Yeah, here you go. Uh-huh. What's the matter with you later, anyway? I don't know. I've been eating like a horse. Turn the time. I'll stop. I'll get it. What do you got, Joe? Okay. Broadcast and an all point bulletin were gotten out on Vernon McCauley. All units in the vicinity of the escape were alerted. An hour passed. There was no report on the suspect. We checked with the main jail and got the details on the escape. They told us that while McCauley was being locked up in his cell, he pushed his fingers into the door jam and had them badly masked when the cell door closed on them. Both of McCauley's wrists were then handcuffed, and along with two other ailing suspects, he was taken over to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital by a pair of transportation officers. Going up the stairs to the hospital, McCauley had turned suddenly, took one of the officers in the stomach, slugged the other one in his feet. It happened at about 4.14 p.m. By 11 o'clock that night, there wasn't a trace of the suspect. 7.30 the next morning, Ben and I checked back in for work. McCauley was still at large. Overnight report, Joe. Handle up. Mm, what do you got? Yeah. Is this store? Gas station? Mm-hmm. Not a record store. All three of them held up between midnight and 2 a.m. Take a look at the bank description. Mm-hmm. WMA, 5 feet 950 pounds. Medium bill, dark ages, very dark eyes, fair complexion, deep scar on chin. How about it? We didn't waste time getting started again, did he? It's a pretty big come down if it's McCauley. Diamond theft, the liquor store. Well, he had to do something. He didn't have any clothes, no money. How about that car he used on those jobs? Stolen. We covered earlier this morning. They're going over to print. From now, Joe? Really? Yeah, I'll miss one right away. We'll just have to call a minute ago. Yeah, what's that? Mm-hmm. Here's the name and address. Matthew Hobbs. He runs a candy store near one of the great schools over in Boyle Heights. He might be able to tell you something. Yeah, about what? Nicole. Saw him last night. We got in the car and drove over to the Boyle Heights district where we located Matthew Hobbs' place of business. It was a small store on Delray Avenue, one block from the neighborhood grammar school. The sign out in front read, New Geneva Candy Parlor and Variety Store. There was the usual display in the window. A wind-up train, a few inexpensive dolls, pencils, writing tablets, and some crepe paper. Inside, the main attraction was two long showcases filled with a variety of penny candy. There was a small photocopy at the rear of the store, topped with a slab of worn marble. Matthew Hobbs was a small, thin man. He looked to be in his mid-60s. He sat behind one of the counters filling cellophane bags of Christmas candy while he talked to us. We asked him about Nicola. Yes, that's right. The woman was here last night. About 10 o'clock, 10 15. No later. You want me to help him? Did you know Nicola that well, Mr. Hart? Hmm, as well as I know most of the kids who grew up around here. Yes, I guess I knew him well. well what did he ask for in the way of help? His money, clothes. He's got no family left. I guess I was the only one he thought to come to. Mm-hmm. Well, how is it that you didn't notify us sooner, Mr. Hart? I knew you'd ask. I'd like to explain if I could. Yes, please. Can you hand me that stack of bags there, Sergeant? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes? No, 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 the number two. Yeah, those, yeah. Uh-huh. All right, here you are. Thank you. As I said, he knocked on my back door about 10 o'clock, and I let him in. I said, just like an animal. Some kind of crazy animal. Let me see. Did he have handcuffs on? Yeah, but the chain connected him was broken. He made me file off each handcuff. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do it at first. I had no idea what was going on. He said he'd kill me if I didn't help him. But trust me, I never saw Bernie like that before. Uh-huh. Go on, please. You know, Sergeant, I knew that boy when he was in grammar school right up the street there. 
Have to sit down and think sometimes, huh? Where they grow up and change. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, what happened after you took the cuffs off of them? Well, he got out of his jail clothes and put on one of my suits. Took what I had in my wallet, $12, and then he kept running around and he found my gun. He took that with him, too. Well, didn't you think of calling for help? Not the way he acted, Sergeant. Just like a crazy animal. I'd be crazy if I'd tried anything. He warned me not to tell anybody he was here. He said he'd come back and kill me if I did. Well, I waited this morning and I called the police. You said McCoy took a gun from him, Mr. Allen. What kind of a gun was it? 32 automatic. A Colt. I've had it for years. I have it registered with you people. He took just what he pleased. Clothes, gun, money. If you want the truth, Sergeant, I just wasn't brave enough to try to stop him. Well, when McCoy left here, did you notice if he had a car? No, he, he left on foot. Walked across the street and went down that way, uh, towards town. I don't know. I, I don't suppose you'll get too far. I, I hope not. Do you have any idea who he might try to contact? Some of his old friends, his relatives? No, no. He doesn't have any folks I know of. Terrible thing, isn't it? Kids growing up. Yeah. It's the way they change, like Nicole. I don't understand them when they're kids. Seen hundreds of them come through here. Know what they're thinking, how they feel. Kind of a hobby. I understand, kids. Yes, sir. The trouble is they grow up. All of a sudden, they stop being kids. Yes, sir. I don't understand them after that. After we left the candy store, we went back to the office and got out a supplementary APB containing a description of the suspect's clothing and the gun that he'd stolen. Together with Gonzalez and Tanya from robbery, Ben and I checked all of Nicole's known friends in his usual hangout. Stakeouts were placed. We got nowhere. The late evening holdups continued. Each of the victims identified Nicole as the bandit. He used the same M.O. in each case. They worked only on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. He'd steal a car, pull three holdups in the same general area within an hour, abandon the car in the same area, and then disappear. Two weeks passed, and then a month. The weekend robberies went on. In the most recent holdup victims, we found out that Nicole had picked up a partner. We checked the man's description to his staff's office. Each of the stolen cars used by the suspects and then abandoned were checked for prints. We failed to identify the second man. The whole of continued. Nicole and his partner were still at large. Monday, January 26th, 8.30 a.m. Ben and I met with Captain Didion. What's the count, kid? The usual, three holdups Friday, three Saturday, three Sunday. He's proved his point, he's consistent. Now, when do you blow the whistle on him? We're doing everything that can be done. Stake out, checks and units on duty. Not enough. The corner pocket wants some results. They want them fast. Uh, how about the times listed for the three stick-ups last night? Have they been double-checked? No, correct. There's something else for you. Figure it out. What is it, Joe? Oh, well, let's see. The drug store out in West Hollywood robbed at 11.14 p.m. Huh? All right, now this one, coffee shop out in the valley, robbed at 11.21 p.m., both of them the same M.O., the same area. Well, it doesn't trade them. They couldn't have made it from the spot in West Hollywood out to the valley in seven minutes. It's not possible. There's a report. Check it. I know, but how could they do it? There must be some way to work out the answer. There's got to be. I can give you a shortcut, you know. Nicole, find them. Another two weeks passed, and then two weeks more. Besides the extra men and units put in service on weekends, Two dozen separate stakeouts were established in areas where we figured Nicole and his accomplice would strike. Didn't help much. The holdups continued. There was only one difference. The description of the bandit didn't jive anymore. We still didn't have an answer to the superhuman speed that the two gunmen seemed to show and robbing victims at widely separated points, all within a short period of time. We stayed on it. Friday, February 21st. Ben and I took our train on night stake out in a vacant store on Sunset Boulevard. We were assigned to cover a drugstore and a bar directly across the street. We spent two weekends on the job. It was quiet. Nothing happened. The third weekend was no different. One thing's for sure. We never have any luck taking stake out. No, we not This empty store it must be the grassy place in town. Oh, no, no, we had worse. What time you got? Oh, five past midnight. Little band over in the bar. Sure, earn your money, don't you? Well, it's allowed anyway. Sure, but hmm? have a look. Hey, right. getting out of that car down the street, there, see? Oh yeah, they're heading for the bar. What do you think? Both got dark here. About the same day. Looks like they're in a hurry. We're going in the bar. Yeah, come on. Come on, we better hurry. I see it. Come on. Throw them again. Look out! Hold it, hold it! Throw 
Bring the gun. Now, come on. Hands behind your head. You're not taking him. What you... Right there. Come on, I'm just you. all right, then? Yeah. You had a good time. Well, that's both of them. That wraps it up, huh? Well, you better look again. Huh? Neither one of them is Nicole. You are listening to Dragnet, a series of authentic case histories documented from official files. No. Many of our corporate customers are worried about a place going wild purchasing office supplies. StaplesLink.com allows them to set up workflow approvals and gives them more control over purchases. StaplesLink.com and IBM are bringing office supplies and office management together. I'm Emory Team of StaplesLink.com, Vice President of Business to Business E-Commerce. StaplesLink with a great idea of giant step forward. Revolutionized the office supply industry for the Saturday, February 22nd. Then and I took the two robbery suspects downtown to the city hall of the interrogation room. We checked them through R and I and found that they both had records for burglary and grand theft auto. The car that they'd been using that night had been stolen. After two and a half hours of interrogation, one of the suspects, a P. Alvarez, decided to break down and cooperate. 1 a.m., the interrogation room. I got something out of it, don't I? Helping you. You're not going to forget I helped you when you get me a car. Well, what do they know about it, Pete? You'll be making your report, and I want you to do it. I knew I never could have went for it. Believe me, it won't happen again. The caller, he talked me into it. Talk to the what, Pete? Help him out on the pickup. I was his partner in First one. Yeah, three goes there? Yeah, that's right. He came to me with a foolproof system of his, and I was sucker enough to go for it. How long did you work with him? Just a couple of weekends. Three, four, maybe. I didn't get along with him. No, nobody gets along with him. He's a little crazy, I think. Well, who's working with him now? Oh, I don't know. He's had two, three different guys. I don't know who's with him. Say, sorry, can I have a drink of water, please? All right, I'll get you some, please. Yeah. Oh, 
One of Mom's tenants, Mr. Reynolds. He's in Bungalow 5. Anyone staying with him or something? No one registered with him, no. He has visitors, though. Is there something wrong? But when did you see this man last? This morning. When I was leaving for work, he was outside working on his car. Are you a bit me, too? Sure, go ahead. Look out. Yes, sir. I see. No, just address the letter to Blue Cross Hospital, son. You can send it to us here at the work to office. That's all right. Well, you're welcome. I'm sorry. I don't know if I can see. And you told us that you saw this man working on his car this morning? Oh, yes. He was uh, parked right outside in front. I couldn't very well miss it. I'm going to tell Mama about it when she gets home. What's that, Miss? Well... It was certainly strange because it's not that time of year. That's why I noticed it. What's that? Uh, he was changing the license plate from his car. Did you get the number? It's right here in my place. 1.32 p.m. With the information furnished by the girl, Ben got on the phone and called in a description of the suspect's car together with the two sets of license numbers. It was a 1941 Ford sedan, dark blue, white sidewall tires. Communications got out of broadcast and the supplementary APB on it. At 6 p.m., Ben and I relieved the men on a stakeout at Nicole's apartment. We waited. No sign of him. We checked with the office on the hour. No sign of the car. 10 p.m. Still nothing doing. 11 o'clock. Nothing. Gonzalez and Kenya from robbery drove out and relieved us and we headed back to the office. 11.26 p.m. What do you think? I don't know. It's like every hole I can think of. Things do for a break, isn't it? Over you. I can use some sleep. Where is that? Right. Yeah, right away. Skiller? Hi. Right. Here's one to move on. Yeah. Carlson Beacon, southeast corner. What is it? Nicole's car. They got it spotted. 11.56 p.m. Ben and I drove to the vicinity of Carlson and Beacon, where we checked with a man in Unit 82 who'd spotted the car. They'd gotten out a Code 5 on it. The description matched perfectly. A 1941 Ford sedan, dark blue, white sidewall tires. The license number was one of those given us by the apartment manager's daughter that afternoon. Together with the two men in 86K, we staked out on the suspect's car at a distance. It was parked almost exactly in the middle of the block. About 20 feet behind it, a red and white delivery truck was parked. The street was fairly deserted. The only place of business open was a small corner bar at the far end of the block. 12.30. 1 a.m. No one came near the dark blue sedan. We waited. 2 a.m. The corner bar closed up. A man came out, got in the red and white delivery truck, and drove off. 2.30 a.m. The dark blue sedan was still sitting there. We kept waiting. Roger, Well, one way or the other, I wish he'd make up his mind. Mm, it's a long way. Closed in here, and it wasn't that vacant store. Oh, I better check and see if it's there. Yeah, right, I'll do it. 82 to control one. 82 to control one. Control one to 82. Go ahead. 82 to control one. Are we clear? Control one to 82. Stand by. Oh, you're yeah, on smoke. Mm, I'm out. You too? Yeah. I guess we do without. Yeah. Control one to 82. Control one to 82. You're clear. Code one. 82 to control one. Roger. Can't make you successful. Hey, have a look, Joe. Just turn the car. Where? Yeah. Far end of the block, opposite side. Heading up this way. Yeah. You make out two of them there? Mm hmm. Two. They're passing by this banner. Oh. Mm. No, they. Hmm. Mm. We're getting near, aren't they? Mm hmm. Come on. Okay, yeah. Spotted this, Joe. They're getting out. All right, hold it there, both of you. Get down, Joe. Throw up the toy. Behind that car. Mm hmm. Throw out your gun, both of you. Harry, don't shoot. Throw out your gun. They'll kill him. Get up, Harry. They'll kill him. Come on, pull him out. Don't shoot him. Here's my gun. Don't shoot. One of them. Oh, Harry, you got to shoot him. That's two. Let's go. Yeah, careful. There's a gun. Don't shoot it. Got my hand up. I keep him up. Okay, I will. Just don't shoot. I didn't use my gun. Harry did. I tried to tell him you heard me. You heard me. I didn't shoot up to shoot. Check my gun. I didn't shoot at you. Come on. Get him out in front of me. I'll get you. Yeah. Come on, Rossi. Go 
good time for me. I say it. Okay, Joe, ready? Let's go. Please, huh? Can you break? You took the wrong time to cry, Mr. Please, now this is the third time for me. I'm no good in that. Well, you had your chances. You took them away. Let's make a deal, huh? I'm no good in jail. No good at all. We're no better out here. Let's go. Uh-huh. Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now... <laughs> Vernon Nicoli and his accomplices were tried and convicted on several counts of first-degree robbery. They received sentences as prescribed by law and are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary. First-degree robbery is punishable by a prison term of not less than five years, with a maximum life term. Ladies and gentlemen, the Red Cross has been asked by your government to help the nation mobilize for defense. You can help by giving generously to the Red Cross. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the Office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. The team of...